I'll call the Scarborough Town Council meeting to order of April 3rd. Please stand and join with me in honoring America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilor Roy. Here. Councilor Holbrook. Here. Councilor Sullivan. Here. Councilor St. Clair. Here. Councilor Blaze. Here. Councilor Benedict. Here. Chairman Alquist. Here. Item four is our uh, public comments. This is your opportunity to step up. You have three minutes. Uh, tell us what's on your mind. Please state your name and your address and uh, speak to the council if you would. And go ahead. Uh, Ted Missouri, 25 Howland Street. Uh, January 2012, I sent a package to the town manager and the town council, fairly good sized package, addressing what I considered was, con considered was some problems with treating business fair in town. Higgins Beach Inn was uh, charged $5,000 for 14 parking places on, for two and a half months. And uh, it was used, uh, the precedent was the charging the uh, Pine Point Fisherman's Co-op uh, slash uh, Rising Tide Restaurant, $5,000 for 25 spaces year-round. Uh, so I looked around some other places in town, and I found some other ones that seemed to me that was in the same predicament. Uh, and I sent that package. I didn't receive one response from a town councilor. Uh, on that package from the, the previous town council. A couple meetings with the town manager, uh, very good meetings, but it didn't seem to resolve the issue. I didn't seem to get a, an answer that I was looking for or an answer. So I'm looking for just basically got two, two issues that I want to raise tonight. One, there were two places, two parking places in front of businesses up on Black Point Road. One at, one's at 524 Black Point Road and the other's at 423. And when I look at the uh, site maps on the town that shows these, all the setback areas and where the public uh, right away is, they seem to be exactly the same. Uh, and I'm told that uh, those were private, uh, uh, private property. But it sure doesn't look like that to me on, when I look at the maps. So I, need an, I wanted an answer for that. And if they are that, it seems to me that they should be charged as well as Higgins Beach is Though I don't, I'm not in favor of charging any business that's been around a long time. You'd think they'd grandfather them in uh, before the zoning came out, so you wouldn't charge Higgins Beach the same either. And I don't own Higgins Beach. Uh, I happen to live across the street from it, so I see what goes on. The only other issue I have is I noticed that up at the business at 524 Black Point Road, uh, they keep a cable across that area. And that's the second year in a row that that cable's been there when they closed their business. It's a pretty good place to sit and watch the sunset if anybody, uh, you know, is familiar with that area. But I raise that because the uh, town made the Higgins Beach and removed the use of cones during the, when they were in season for the two and a half months that he used to try to hold it for, you know, his clients when they would come. So, uh, one, I think that... Uh, that could be a potential liability, that uh, cable running across there, some jogger at night, running there, trips and falls, breaks a leg or something. Uh, I would think that would be a, a, a liability. So I, I would hope that the town council and the town manager would at least take the time to sit down, have a meeting. It doesn't look like rocket science to me. I'm either right or I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, that's fine. I don't care. But I've made an effort. I got this bone, and I'm not letting go of it. So, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Mr. Mazur. Anybody else would like to speak? Please step up, state your name and address. Haven't seen none. I'll close the public comment section. And next we'll go to the minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. Any areas or omissions? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? A vote. Next. Adjustments to the agenda. I don't think there is any. No? Okay, next item. 
Items to be signed, I'll do that through the meeting and the first order. Order number 13-24 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the request for a combined massage establishment massage therapist license from Solani Edwards doing business as Soul Massage Therapy located at 51 U.S. Route 1. And this is a public hearing. I'll open the public hearing. Anybody from the public would like to speak on this issue? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. What's the pleasure of the council? Move approval of order 1324. Second. Any discussion? Questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Next item. Uh, item 8 is non action items. We'll receive an update from the Wentworth Building Committee on the progress of the project. We'll give the podium to the Building Committee. Good evening. As many of you know, my name is Paul Kozell. I live at Four Lillian Way here in Scarborough, and I chair the Wentworth Intermediate School Building Committee. I'm here tonight to give the council a brief update and an overview of the progress of the new school project. Um, let me start by saying, and I presented this to the school board a couple of weeks ago, let me start by saying that we are at 20, 22 percent completion as far as the project is concerned. Um, we're over 100 days into construction, and uh, this is good news. It's a great milestone for us as far as the project is concerned because as many folks know, uh, the success of a construction project often depends on the first 10 percent of the project and the last 10 percent. Uh, if you get a good start, you have a good foundation and the project moves forward. So we're very happy with uh, the way things are progressing. Uh, I had an opportunity to walk the project site two weeks ago with Todd Jepson and see the project myself. And I'm happy to say it, it, the project really does look very good. Um, the other part that was very interesting uh, on doing the walk around, it was good to see how well Todd Jepson himself gets along with everybody on the project site. And talking with Todd, um, he walks that project site every day, maybe more than once amongst all his other duties, um, gets along very well with the folks on the project, and is just a great asset to have eyes and ears as far as the project's concerned. So. What is going on with the project itself? We all drive by it every day. Um, at this point, you know, the school was yellow, uh, then it was blue, uh, but it's going up very well. So as far as updates are concerned, all clearing is complete. That was probably the most dramatic event as far as this project is concerned to date. The newer access road is in and paved. Uh, the play field is graded. Um, the construction folks are seeing now is essentially areas B and C. Uh, that is going up quickly. Electricians have been on site to handle temporary power. Foundations have been poured. 80 plus geothermal wells are in uh, and, and coming along. Now comes the point of uh, bringing those into the building. Mechanical and plumbing has been laid out. Seal erection is in place and has been inspected. Uh, the dens glass sheeting is up, which is the yellow board that everybody sees when they drive by. Uh, the air and water barrier is going up next, which is the blue barrier going around. Uh, the funny story about that uh, that I was telling the school board is early on in the project I asked Mrs. Dexter if I could uh, have the opportunity to pick some of the colors in the school. Um, and she gladly let me pick the colors of the sheeting uh, and the AV barrier knowing full well that those would be ultimately covered up and no one would see my color selections. <laughs> uh, the roof is going on, radiant heating lines and manifolds have been placed on the second floor, uh, windows are in and are being tested. Um, as of last night, we started to have two substantial pours as far as the concrete floors are concerned on the second floor. I'm going to speak to that, about that in a moment. Um, and the other thing that has been done is the security at the school that was originally designed has been revisited to make sure that it's up to standard given some of the tragedies of last year. Only criticism that I have so far with the project um, concerns the geothermal wells. That was supposed to be done earlier than it was. It took longer. Uh, but the good news is it really had no impact on the critical path of the project. So overall, very well. On the financial side of the project, it's tracking well. We've had very few change orders um, as far as the project is concerned, uh, resulting from problems with either the plans or specifications. There have been, have been some upgrades uh, that the building committee has made uh, as far as the project is concerned, but overall uh, the project is tracking well. As far as billings from the contractor, there's been no front loading. Um, as far as getting more money up front than, than necessary, it's been tracked very well. Um, I will tell you, uh, in my experience uh, with our company, uh, we always monitor costs very well. 
we have our own reporting system, and uh, Kate Bolton, who's here tonight, I've, I've monitored her reports, and they've been top-notch as far as keeping track of costs. Cash flow is tracking and, and is where it needs to be. So overall, very, very good. Uh, immediate upcoming activities, work will continue in the, the B and C areas of the school. Um, you're starting to see the foundation work in Area D start to progress down or coming east towards um, the existing Wentworth. That's going to continue with the weather improving the continue to pour foundations. Um, overall, like I said, just going very well. The other thing that I looked for when we were on site two weeks ago was what's the project look like in general. The site is clean, the site is safe, uh, and overall the project is on schedule. Um, in talking with the general contractor, he has a policy of uh, no food and drink on his project. Um, so no Dunkin' Donuts cups, no McDonald's wrappers, no sandwich wrappers. Again, just looking very good. As far as the building committee itself is concerned, um, we are clearly in a, a different role than we were prior to the bid going out. At this point, we're overseeing the project. Um, we meet, we continue to meet once a month. The steering committee, committee meets every other week. Um, so that's going well. Committees at this point have shifted. Um, you know, committees that weren't busy before the project went out to bid, such as interiors and grant committee, are very busy now. Uh, so it's it's the, the project, again, is going very well. The one uh, major decision that we made at our last committee meeting and was subsequently approved by the school board was to change the name of the school. Um, we were the Benjamin F. Wentworth uh, Intermediate School. The school's name now, or the new school's name, will be the Wentworth School. So overall, as I said, the project is in great shape. Um, going back to probably the most recent incident, uh, I was made aware of an email from a, a, a citizen today, a woman by the name of Mrs. Ritchie, concerning a concrete pour that took place last night. Um, Councillor Holbrook brought it to our attention, and there's going to be an area of some improvement. Uh, what happened here was uh, they were scheduled to do 300 plus cubic yard pour of concrete on April 1st and April 2nd. Last night they ran into issues with temperature um, and were not able to get the concrete to cure. They did some additives into the concrete and just had to work it longer than necessary. Um, the original intent had been to be done by 11 p.m. Unfortunately, they went to 2.30 a.m. into 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, clearly a, an unplanned incident. And looking into this a little bit further, um, we have discovered as a result of this coming out that not all folks in the surrounding area were given notice of this. So what we have done at this point, we've revisited uh, the notice provisions that we have. We've expanded this. Um, we're now going to be sending out notice to everybody, not just the immediate abutters, but everybody in or around the school so that they're aware of these type of, act, uh, these type of uh, work activities. In addition, Todd Jepson is going to be writing to all the residents in or around the area, making them aware of what transpired, give them uh, uh, an outline or a summary of the facts of what transpired and then apologize. Uh, the reality is it's a construction project. These things happen. Um, you know, if this is the only bump in the road that we hit through the process, we'll be very lucky. Uh, but the reality is it's a bump in the road and, and our goal moving forward is try to mitigate these type of problems so that we don't run into them again. Uh, but again, <coughs> from my perspective, the project looks very well. Uh, that's it for my update. I'm happy to answer any questions from the council. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none. Thank you. Good Thank job. you. Sounds like it's going real well. Appreciate it. Appreciate the updates too. They very helpful. There's uh, no old business uh, under new business. It's order number 1325. Is the first reading and schedule a public hearing on the proposed municipal school budget for fiscal year 2014? Going to give an outline. Sure. I'll try just a very uh, brief outline. Uh, what is before you is uh, the budget that I proposed uh, to the council and is still in very much a process of review with the Finance Committee. I suspect uh, Councilman uh, Roy will respond earlier or later on regarding the activities of the Finance Committee, but they're again about midpoint. They've had two sessions and had two more scheduled. So, as is the, has been the process, uh, the council in an effort to get the adoption process begun and underway, um, typically considers my proposed budget to begin that process. I, I have to 
shorted, but I think it's worth uh, stating um, out loud that I think there's an expectation that the budget will change in some respects uh, based on the input of finance committee thus far. I know of a number of areas that will change. Uh, we have upcoming workshops uh, with the school board. Um, so uh, I would suggest that this really just gets the process started, and I think there's a, an open recognition that it's likely to change in final reading. Uh, the budget order itself uh, does a number of things, and it's worth just touching on those. Obviously, it states the particulars, the, the financial particulars. Um, it also, by reference, adopts, <coughs> this, adopts the annual um, fee schedule, and there are a number of proposed changes uh, that staff has recommended to the Finance Committee and Council. Um, it recognizes not only school, county, a school town, but also the county tax levy. It includes capital projects. Um, and also makes a reference to the LD1 tax levy requirements as well. So we have really tried to um, expand this action item, if you will, to capture all budget-related matters. And uh, I do intend to provide a full presentation to Council uh, next Wednesday at your workshop. I'm certainly pleased to answer any questions you might have this evening, though. Thank you. Uh, before we get going, is there uh, anybody from the public who would like to speak on this matter? Just step up to the podium and state your name and your address, and we'll give you some little time to talk about it if you like. Seeing none, um, Councilor, what's the uh, wishes of the council? I have a motion. Move approval of Order 1325. Second. Questions? Anybody have any questions? I just want to remind everybody this is early in the process. The Finance Committee is uh, dissecting the budget now, and um, the first reading is the first reading. So it's uh, it's a way for us to get it going. Councilor Roy, who is the chairman of the Finance Committee. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to summarize you know, where we're at for the, for the public benefit. Um, we began the uh, hearings on the budget on March 26th, and on that me at that meeting we uh, heard uh, input from public safety. Uh, the police, fire, and EMS from planning department, from finance, and assessing. And then um, this week on April 2nd, we heard from Public Works, the library, the uh, Scarborough Economic Development Corporation, and the administrative portion of the budget. Um, next Tuesday, we will be hearing from the Community Services Department, the MIS, the Management Information Systems, and uh, from the School Department. And then we have uh, third, uh, Tuesday the 16th, um, we'll be doing the final review and recommendations from the Finance Committee. Um, I, I guess I'd like to say as far as the budget is concerned, I mean, everybody has read the paper and they've looked at the uh, potential increase um, in the request for the budget. And uh, certainly uh, that's only a beginning process. Uh, I think that, I think important point to be made is that when the manager um, developed his budget, he only include the, included the proposed reductions uh, that uh, Governor LePage had presented, pushed forward um, relative to the loss of excise taxes. Um, and uh, when the school department, uh, uh, Superintendent uh, in Twistle, um, presented his budget, he included all of the potential reductions that were proposed from the state, which included um, uh, the uh, school subsidy uh, reduction of uh, 1.2 million and the potential for having to pay a greater portion of the uh, retirement fund for the teachers. So the total of those uh, uh, reductions was approximately 1.6 million. So two different uh, uh, kind of approaches to the budget. So um, keep that in mind as you look at as you look at the budgets. Um, we will be meeting on Wednesday the 10th, next Wednesday the 10th, and that will be the opportunity for the public input on all the components of the budget, and the Council will listen to those concerns and suggestions, and hopefully there will be a lot of those. And then um, for the first time, uh, we're going to have a, uh, an additional meeting on the 11th, which is Thursday the 11th at 7 p.m. The members of the Finance Committee from the School Department and the Finance Committee from the Council are going to sit and discuss the budget re related to the pre presentation of the budget as well as the input from the public the night prior. So we'll be talking about the general concepts of the budget and uh, what ways in which we can am ameliorate the, uh, the, the impact on the uh, public at, at that point in time. And then, uh, as was mentioned, on the 24th, 
we will have a, a town council and school board workshop on the budget again with all members from the town council and all members from the school, school board, um, which will then um, lead us to the final reading on the budget on May 1st, uh, which would be the final reading um, with the proposed adjustments from not only the Finance Committee, but perhaps other members of the Council may have um, uh, amendments to the budget that they might like to propose. And then following that, on May 14th, um, there will be the validation vote on the school budget uh, as mandated by the state. Uh, and, uh, and then if, if it doesn't pass, then we'll have to rework the budget. If, if it does, if the proposed budget does pass, then, then we're go. So that's basically the process. Uh, Certainly at this point, I would say personally, um, I'm certainly not in favor of 10.71% increase in the budget, and uh, we're going to work hard to make it uh, uh, fair and reasonable for all citizens of the town of Scarborough. So uh, we've got a lot of work can, uh, yet to do. So. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? Uh, sure. Council Albright. I'm just going to echo upon um, some of Judy's thoughts. Um, I'm on finance committee with you this year, so um, certainly our, our work and our road is very long and will continue, but um, certainly, I, I, for myself, just as a personal note, I, I, I won't be supporting it 10.71%. It would be, I think, absolutely detrimental to our citizens in this community. So we'll be working hard and long, I'm sure, to try to come up with a reasonable answer and work something out. Great. Thank you. Anybody else like to comment? Yeah, so I'd just like to say quickly that I attended the school board's workshop presentation this last Saturday where they went um, over their line item by line item. Um, I was extremely impressed by the presentation that every department made. Um, it was good to kind of get into the trenches and see what these guys are up against. Um, I think that kind of increases scary and um, a hard thing to swallow. I wouldn't say that I would, I would support an increase like that, but I, I do want to say that I think that there's some wiggle room in there, but I'm was very impressed with what, what they have going on. I think sometimes it's easy to look at something and, and base our decisions on it, and it's another thing to actually get inside of it and see what these guys are working with. And so I think there's some room there. Thank you. Anybody else want to comment? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I just wanted to say that I got a, I got numerous calls from especially the older segment of our society in town, and they basically said that that, that the stages the budget was last week did have to be moving out of town. They had five hundred dollars or six hundred dollars increase was just impossible. And I think that uh, although I should be on the side of the fence, I'm on the side of the fence of the taxpayer that 300 last year, 500 this year, you just can't keep going like this. And that's where I believe the school has to understand if you don't have it, you don't spend it. You can't have it. We've done it for t the last 10 to 20 years, and that's why we're in the pickle that we're in right now. That everybody everybody's been overspending and just used to it and now the clamp is on. So I can just assure you that as a councilman, I won't be voting for any ten percent increase in any way, shape or form. People don't have it. But I do agree that the people on the budget committee will work as hard as they can and they still have a long way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yep. Yeah, yeah I just I just like to make a few comments. Um, last month, uh, George Whistle was kind enough to spend two days with me. One day, we just sat down and discussed education. We discussed business. We discussed backgrounds and everything. And then we spent another day touring three of the schools. And upon completion of that, I sat back and I started thinking, we keep on talking about a school budget, we keep on talking about an education budget. 
But these people are dealing more with more than education. If you want to really be fair about it, you should define it as the school and welfare, child welfare budget, because they do a lot more than education. Um, <coughs> not to say that I'm in favor of what they're proposing, but it's getting to the point, uh, not only here in Scarborough, but across the state and across the country, that there's just too much government that's involved in our education process. And that government is causing an awful lot of additional expense for the individual school districts. And somehow that's got to be addressed. We can't address it necessarily right here. I mean, we could probably stick our heels in and say we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that, but something has got to be done. Um, otherwise, the schools are going to have to go out of business. And, and we can't afford that. We can't afford to let our children down. Um, so basically, what I'm trying to say is this is a, a hard road to to tow at this point in time, and we have to spend a lot of time really thinking about what can we do to make the budget as reasonable as possible, and where can we stick our feet into the ground and say enough is enough, and we're just not going to do a lot of things. Thank you. Thank you. Council Sullivan. No, oh, well said. Um, I thought I saw a hand up there. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, no, sorry. I, I had the opportunity to go to the Finance Committee meeting yesterday, and I, I was impressed once again on the municipal <laughs> side, which I happened to see, it was Public Works, um, how well they do, and Mike does, to run that department. Um, Mike Chari does a great job, and um, to what you speak of, um, Council Blaze, that you know, for years down there, they make everything work. You know, they push their equipment to the end, but they take very good care of it so it can last longer. You know, and I dare say that their equipment probably lasts longer than any other community around here. And I think that says a lot for the way they maintain it. They keep it up, they will repair it, um, and it's it's just it was it was refreshing to hear uh, the public works department to come in and 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 and. and and again, they talked about Eco Maine and how we save money over there. Seventy thousand dollars, you know, in tipping fees this year is going to be saved. And Eco Maine is a well-run organization, so um, there is some good news out there. And you know, their budget, and as you know, the municipal budget came in under what we requested, which is a really good thing. So I think it, it, part of that is, again, is how how they run their departments and knowing that they have to be efficient and knowing that they have to serve the people of this town and get the very you know best bang for the buck you know to make things work and i i really uh, give them a lot of credit and uh certainly other departments i i just don't mean to say public works but certainly the other departments we listen to and i've been on the finance committee the last three or four years i'm not on this year but it's it's uh it's 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 all good uh, that part of it. Uh, Council Roy. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to add a couple of things. One of the things that I've asked everybody as they presented their components of the budget was that they talk to reductions in their requests versus cuts. Mm. Um, it's one of the things that has bugged the dickens out of me over the years because each year there is a request for more money. More money. So it, we're not really cutting the budget as it currently exists. We are reducing the request, and I think that's an important uh, component. Um, and certainly, I, I agree with Councilor Blaze. The mandate issue. I mean, that is, you know, the state is mandated to provide 55% support towards the uh, education, and they're not they're not hitting that sure. mark. Um, um, the and and I think you know you're right. The municipal departments. I mean, Public Works particularly had a, a reduction in their budget by 2.4%. Um, that's that's significant. Um, and the other thing I think that all the communities are facing this same thing, and I think it's going to push the envelope because we've got to find other ways to find revenues. And one of the things that I think you'll be hearing more about is the one percent local tax option um, on a state on a state level because communities have got to find other sources of revenue other than uh, the state. And uh, I think if if not if anything comes out of the, the all the budget 
close, you know, uh, deliberations is hopefully some some way to increase their revenues. Um, and the other just point is that the times of the budget hearings are is eight to ten in the morning, and it is <coughs> televised live, and it is repeated. So if anybody has missed it, you can go back and see it on our cable cable network and. Uh, hear the presentations from the various communities, uh, from the various departments. So that's it. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? If not, all those in favor? <coughs> Opposed? It's a vote. Next item. Order number 13-26 is a first reading and refer to the planning board. Request from Robert L. Jensen, Jr. and Joyce E. Jensen for proposed zone change on property located at 289-293 Black Point Road, map U90, lots 15 and 16. Thank you. And we're going to have somebody describe this before we start. State your name. Please. That's me. Yes, I believe that Nancy St. Clair will be uh, providing a brief presentation on the proposal. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Nancy St. Clair of St. Clair Associates. We're here tonight to initiate uh, the formal request for a zone change on two pieces of property owned by. Uh, Robert L. Jensen, Jr. and Joyce C. Jensen. They're located on Black Point Road at the corner of Black Point and Old Neck Road. The two properties have been in the, the Jensen family's ownership for a number of years, and they have their home on one of the properties, and their adjacent property is currently uh, unimproved, but they are looking to build a home for their retirement on that piece of property. So what we're seeking tonight uh, to begin is a request to rezone this property. These two parcels are actually located in the RF uh, zoning district. We're seeking uh, council approval to rezone to R2. Uh, if you look at the map, you'll see that the two properties are outlined sort of in a maroon color. Uh, there's a dashed line in between the shape. Those are the, the limits of the two parcels there. Map R90, lots 15 and 16. And uh, as you can see, they're in the RF zoning district now. But if you look at the yellow on the plan, those are the current R2 uh, zoning districts. So you'll see that all up Black Point Road on either side, as well as on the northerly side of Old Neck Road, the properties in that area are zoned R2. In looking at the property sort of in the context of the, the uh, surroundings, one of the things that we reviewed also was the 2006 update to the comprehensive plan, and that's a figure that's the second one in your packet. This is figure 10 from uh, the 2006 update to the town's comprehensive plan. And if you look, we have sort of an oval circle there. Uh, that shows the properties in that area. And if you'll notice, they're all showing up as R2. And so it's our understanding that the vision for that area and the, the future land use plan that was cited in the 2006 uh, update to the comp plan uh, did identify those areas as being R2. Uh, so we'd like to seek a rezone in order to allow those to be not only more consistent with the properties in the area, but consistent with the town's vision uh, for the zoning and future land use uh, in that area. On the 22nd of March, we met with the Long Range Planning Committee, presented the same uh, two exhibits to those folks, uh, and had a discussion with them regarding that. Uh, um, Councilor Roy was at the, at the, the meeting, uh, but the uh, result of that meeting was a recommendation to send a positive recommendation to you folks uh, in order to uh, pursue the zone change. We understand that this is the first step and that we do need to also go to meet with the folks at the planning board uh, and then come back and talk to you folks. But if you do have any questions, we're certainly here to answer them. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anybody from the public who would like to speak on this matter? Please step right up to the microphone, state your name and address. Anybody? If not, what's the pleasure of the council? I move approval of order 1326. Second. Second. Discussion? Any questions? Yep. Yeah. Uh, is this preventing anything from happening right now? 
The applicant uh, would like to build a home for their retirement on their property, and they, as part of this rezone, would like to obviously optimize the value of their property for the future. So this is why we're we're seeking the rezone. Repeat that. I didn't I didn't understand the reason. The applicants own two adjacent properties. They would they have a home on one of them. They'd like to build a home for their retirement on the adjacent property and would like to be able to optimize the value of their land for the future for sale. So how does changing the zoning do that? It makes it a more valuable piece of property. Could you address the uh, acreage on both lots? Yes. Um, the total area is 6.34 acres. That's comprised of two properties. Uh, one is 3.93 acres. That's MAP uh, R90 lot 15, and that uh, is currently unimproved. Uh, R90 lot 16 is 2.41 acres, and that's where the Jensen's home is. Would the acreage prohibit them building the home if it were, if it were to remain RF? If it were to remain RF, I think there would be an issue with being able to do what they'd like to do for ownership on their land size-wise and be able to sell the home. I, I sit on the uh, Long Range Planning Committee, and one of the new roles of the Long Range Planning Committee is, is to address these isolated zoning issues. And I, I think the important component of the presentation certainly is relative to the, the, the maps from the comprehensive plan. And certainly, although the comprehensive plan is not the Bible, it is not the law, it was recommended and voted upon by the public that this parcel of land uh, existed at that point in time as a, as a RF, but was proposed with the approved comprehensive plan to become uh, R2. So uh, certainly, uh, you know, the long, uh, actually the comprehensive planning committee um, envisioned that, that parcel becoming an R2 as part of uh, the rezoning effort. So th that, th that, made me feel comfortable about it, that it wasn't, it isn't something that we're, we're inventing today. It was something that was already looked at in, when the comprehensive plan was developed uh, as, as, a, um, as a rezoning. So. But it's not, it's not preventing anything from being done now. I mean, if they wanted to build another house right there, they could do that, right? They can build their new home but the value of their property in selling their existing home would be improved with the zone change. Okay. Anybody else? I don't agree with that, but that's fine. Any other comments? I just had a question. What yep. is the, um, the dark green water? Resource Wetlands. Resource, resource, resource protection. Mm -hmm. Runs along the... For a week. And this zone change isn't changing any aspect of that. It's just changing the RF. That's correct. Right. I mean, they they would be subject to the setback from the resource protection. I believe That's 75 correct. feet. That's correct. Correct. None well, of the overlays. If I could just ask a question, perhaps, and clarify. So I, mm -hmm. I presume, and, and forgive me for not knowing this answer myself, but. Um, I expect that you've acquainted yourself with our zoning ordinance. I presume the density in the R2 is greater than that allowed in the RF. Yes. So there could be the potential for further development on that property Correct. with this. Okay. Yep. Yep. Councilor Solomon. I have a question of Councilor Roy. Mm. Do you, how long has it been R2 on the rest of the, the other existing? The, the, the whole right-hand side of Black Point Road has yep. been RF. Um, if you notice, there are three parcels that precede yep. that lot, and um, we discussed in the Long Range Planning Committee whether or not it might be appropriate not only to rezone um, the Jensen parcels, but to rezone those, those three other parcels, but felt that certainly that could happen at a later date because we needed certainly to uh, discuss that issue with, uh, with those residents. But it's been, it's been RF um, 
I don't, I don't know how long it's... No, well, what, what I'm saying is, is um, right here on the map, yeah. uh, before you get to the property, on both sides of the Black Point Road, it was R2. Um, that's what I'm asking. Has that been R2 for a long time? Yes. Okay, so yeah. basically it looks like this is almost an oversight, that it wasn't changed. When, when the comprehensive, well, the comprehensive plan proposed that it be changed so that it was consistent. And I think what the comprehensive plan and the long-range planning committee have tried to do is when you look at parcels of land that are on both sides of a road, try to make them um, the same. Right. Uh, and, and so that, that, I think, added to the, the argument that it w seemed appropriate. Right. I've, I've had that question asked to me um, many times, you know, what, um, the, the split on, an R, we'll say, an, an R4 and an R2 property well, is no difference in them. Why is it still an R, R2 when it, everything else around is an R4? So I think that's just a matter of bringing it to the attention of the Long Range Planning Committee to probably... Yeah. Uh, and we did that same thing up on Whipple Lane, Scott o Hill. Yeah. We had Whipple Lane, on one yep. side it was right. R2, on the other side it was RF, and um, changed changed it to, you know, R2, so that both sides of the road were the same in the same zone. Right, okay. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I would just note that the distinct difference between the Whipple Lane and this is that your own, our own comprehensive plan recommended this change uh, prior to anyone bringing it. Yeah, forward. and Whipple Lane didn't, I mean, they didn't. That think came from so. the property owner. Yep. yep. Any other questions? <coughs> This is uh, first reading and going to be um, sent, to the board. sent to the planning board. All those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Yeah. Thank the, you very much. The planning yeah. board will have another public hearing, too. So, mm -hmm. Order number 13-27 is the first reading and schedule a public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 313, the Town of Scarborough Property Tax Assistance Ordinance, Section 5, Determination of Eligibility mm -hmm. and Amount of Eligibility, and Section 8, Timing of Payments. Council, are you going to yeah. explain this? Yeah. Um, as we are, all the council is at least are aware, we have the Property Tax Assistance Program, and we had amended it last year, and we had lowered the age to 62 from 65. Um, and uh, this year, as, as the time rolled around, we had an additional numbers of folks. I think there were 39 more than had originally uh, the previous year. And the manager tries on each uh, budget year to crystal ball it and, you know, put aside a sum of money that would meet the needs of the numbers that would, would apply. And what happened this year is more people applied, and therefore um, the manager followed the, the ordinance as it existed, and instead they can receive up to $500, but instead of receiving the maximum amount that they could, many, many of the recipients uh, received 30 and maybe $40 less in amounts than, than they would have received uh, with the circuit breaker. Um, the program is tied to the state circuit breaker program so that if they qualify for the state circuit bro break, broker, yeah, breaker program, then they also qualify for the, for the local. Um, and that 30 and $40 meant a lot to uh, some, of the, some of the residents who, who really needed it. So um, we looked at it at Rules and Policies Committee, and the recommendation of the committee is that we strike uh, Section 5, uh, Number B, um, available monies from the town circuit breaker fund uh, so that it just states that uh, the amount of money uh, refund awarded by the state circuit broker, uh, that they would get that or be the $500 uh, or up to the $500. And then um, in, the, in Section 8, it allowed for the pro rating, which the manager did do. He followed that ordinance as it existed, that the amount uh, could be prorated amount if there were inadequate funds available. There was $130,000 set aside in the budget, and that was insufficient to meet the numbers of people that applied. So we prorated it, and again, it, it, meant, it meant a lot, you know, even though it was a small amount of money, it really um, was important to those folks. And so the, the recommendation of the uh, Rules and Policies Committee is to um, uh, strike uh, Section 5B and to strike the uh, the prorated statement in Section 8. Thank you for that <coughs> explanation. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak on this matter? Please step right up, state your name. 
We lost the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none, um, what's the pleasure of the council? I move would approve move. of uh, order number 1327. Second. Discussion, Councilor Sullivan. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is a no-brainer, and I mean, I never, I mean, you and I were first started this, and it was your idea, and I said, wow, that's a great idea, and I, we never envisioned that this is going to happen, nor has it till now, so we're going to fix it. Um, and I asked the council chairs, uh, uh, like I said, it's a no-brainer, are we able to do a first and second reading and dispose of this matter tonight? I have to have a public hearing. We have to have a public we, hearing. We've got to have a public hearing, and, I, and it's not going to slow I, anything down okay. if, if we do the, the second reading at the next right. meeting. Right. Well, this went through the policies committee, so that's why I was wondering if it did need a public hearing. Yeah, yeah, it, it yeah, does. yeah it okay, does. Thank yeah, you. we want to do that anyway, and right. again, that won't slow anything down. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Uh, Councilor Sullivan's right. I mean, it, I guess it was an oversight. We can look at that, but um, we were both surprised. I think everybody was surprised when we found that some of these uh, um, payments were prorated, and we certain that was never our intent when we when we uh, proposed this originally. So this cleans it up. It makes it crystal clear what people are going to get, and I think it's a way to go, and I would urge everybody to support yeah. this. Council yeah, and I don't think it'll slow anything down, but certainly it give direction as far as, as we continue through the budget process, because oh. the amount of money that the manager has incorporated into the budget, we, uh, we need to look at that and may, and may need to adjust that to a higher amount. Okay. Yeah. And so just to, let me comment from a practical point of view, there's really two things. One is, first and foremost, make sure we're adequately budgeted so yeah. there, there won't be an issue that uh, lack of funding. And if in the event there is lack of funding, um, I'll be forced to come back and uh, approach the Finance Committee or the full council and secure additional financing or funding to make sure that we can fulfill all of those obligations. Yeah, that won't be painful, I can't believe. I think that that would go over pretty good. If you did come back, we'd probably be all for that. So N knowing that more people are going to uh, participate than we thought would, uh, I think it would be welcome if you did come back. Go ahead. Councilor Sullivan. Um, the, uh, I had to leave for some reason, so I didn't catch the meeting. Who is the, um, we, are you on the Rules and Policy Committee? Or? Uh, uh, Councilor Benedict is Benedict. the chair. Okay, Council uh, Blaise. May I, I'd like to ask a question of this. Go ahead. Um, was, um, was any discussion given to, uh, once we put an amount in, in, in an account, that um, if there was funds left over, it would roll over into the next year instead of going back into the general fund. Yes. We did. And yes and yes. Okay, so that's going to happen. We're going into a separate fund, not the general fund, I believe. That's right. That's but before it was going back into the general fund if it was left over. Correct. Okay. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right. I just wanted to just to be clear. To do that, the council would have to create a reserve account. Um, so yes. the finance department would have a place to put this money separate from the, uh, the general fund. And we can do that. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, however we need to do that, we'll do that. <laughs> okay, we're, we're so okay. we are, okay. I just wanted to make yeah. that clear, so thank you. Yeah. Does, that it, have to, does that have to be in the uh, it doesn't, policy? It no? I don't believe it really should be in the policy, but it should have... Uh, some council action yeah. directing us to create and such a reserve account so we know when there's ex when there are excess funds that's where they go as opposed to money. being part of fund balance okay. we can we can make a, a separate order oh, well, this is, we can we, we, we look forward to the yeah. rules and policy or the finance committee bringing whatever we need to vote on the next meeting it's up to will of council we'll put together the simple order and it'll be on your next agenda awesome okay yes. i like it any other comments? All those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Order number 13-28 is the first reading and scheduled public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 302, the Scarborough Town Council Rules, Policies, and Procedures Manual by amending Section 101 definitions by adding a new definition for immediate family. And Council Benedict, did that come from his committee? Yeah, I think I'll just report quickly on it. Uh, Councilor Benedict was, uh, I think, scouring through um, the ordinances uh, as a chairperson of the Rules and Policies Committee should do, and uh, noticed that there was uh, 
in particular in the council rules pertaining to ethics and, and very specifically regarding conflicts of interest, there's multiple references to immediate family and that ends up being a very integral component in that context, uh, yet we lack a definition and I think uh, correctly um, he inquired as to well, by whose definition and sure enough there are multiple definitions, uh, there's no one. Uh, we look first at state law and, and there's at least four different kind of accepted definitions, uh, all a bit different, mind you. And so, uh, in the end, uh, I believe it's the wisdom of the Rules and Policies Committee to create uh, our own definition for our own purposes. And that's what's before you this evening. This would add the definition of immediate family to mean as follows. Uh, it would define it uh, to mean spouse, domestic partner. We have some information to help define that. Uh, child, parents, brothers, sisters, mother-in-law, father-in-law, grandfather, grandmother, grandchildren, stepfather, stepmother, stepchildren, or other relatives living in the same household. Uh, so I, th that's not as broad as some of the definitions, but it's fairly inclusive. So this just avoids uh, any potential issue if one come up. There's a definition so we can all look to it, read it, understand it and have the same definition of immediate family. Thank you. Uh, do we have a motion? Yeah. Uh, I have a motion. Uh, anybody from the public who want to speak? Sure. Step right up, state your name and address, please. Yeah, Ted Reserve, 25 Houghton Street. Would you repeat those uh, again for me? I, I missed something. What? what? Okay. Sorry. If, you, if you'd like, we, we'll provide them to you in writing if you want to take them with you also, but we'll read them. No, no, I, I just... Uh, did you have a significant other in there with everything going on today and stuff like that? Well, yeah, domestic partner. Domestic partner. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. I missed that. Yep. <laughs> 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 thank you for looking out for other people. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, what's the pleasure of the council? Move we'll we'll it. Second. Uh, comments? Anybody? I just say I'd like to say that I think it's very helpful. Um, I know when I had to write my disclosure last year, you know, I just went based on the actual, you know, Webster's Dictionary, which was anything second cousin and closer. Um, that can become daunting to try to figure out. So um, I certainly applaud and appreciate a more defined definition here. Yeah. It's relative to all the cousins that you have <laughs> in West Scarborough. <laughs> Yeah, again, thank you for uh, pointing that out for us and correcting it. Uh, I think it's a, a good idea also. Any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Order number 13-29 is act on the request from the Finance Committee to authorize the town manager to contract with McPage LLC to perform the municipal audit for the next f three fiscal years pursuant to Section 215 of the Scarborough Town Charter. Uh, uh, Council Roy, would you... Like to make a comment, or do you yes? Um, comment? We received a letter from McPage LLC, and um, they were proposing um, a fee for um, or forty-two thousand for the upcoming year. Their um, amount prior to that, um, or the last two years, was thirty-seven thousand. It would be forty-two thousand for one year, and then uh, forty-two thousand five hundred the second year, and forty-three thousand the third year. Um, and then also tied to that, there was an opportunity for the fees to be reduced by $2,000 <coughs> to capital assets and depreciation um, requires significant less effort from them uh, as has been necessary and the finance department is already moving uh, in that direction. So um, although it, it, it's an increase there, we, we probably will, re will be able to save that $2,000. Uh, Tom, just a further clarification. Um, these services are for performing audit services for both town and school mm -hmm. financials and any uh, special or single audits uh, we may require through grants and such. Yes. So. And uh, this this company uh, we changed to what, six years ago? Uh, I, I Close. Believe it's about five. Yeah, so, yeah about uh, almost six years ago. Second. And um, they have been able to, you know, do the. the Quality work, and we've continued to receive, you know, awards for the uh, reports, and uh, so I think I would ha I would recommend it, and I believe the finance committee felt that same way as well. Good. Thanks for the explanation. Anybody from the public? 
If not, the pleasure of the council. Move approval. Second. Second. Comments. I just want to say it seems like a lot of money, but it is. It's it's both sides. It's municipal and the school, and it's a very difficult, a very complex um, um, undertaking to do this. So, um, and we've been pleased in the past with their work. So there's been absolutely no question, and they're they're really um, forthcoming. They meet with us uh, once a year, and more often with the town manager and certainly our finance director, Ruth Porter. So we, I think, we have no complaints. Our concerns at all. I think the other nice caveat is that the uh, the young man who uh, did the audit and presented it to us is a Scarborough High School graduate. So it's yeah. a nice caveat. <laughs> Council Sullivan. If I remember correctly, when we uh, debated switching companies, uh, this was cons this company was considerably less money than Thank you. Everybody else. I, I just want to say, yep. as, sure. as us or myself, I don't want to speak for you, but coming in as a new counselor, the reports that they put together was very easy to navigate and get through. So I think that, to me, that was extremely helpful. Yep. Thank you. Anybody else? All those in favor? Opposed? It's vote. Next Order item. number 13-30 is act on the request from Vacation Land Dog Club, Inc. in York County Kennel Club for a mass gathering permit for the AKC sanctioned dog show, the Southern Maine Coastal Classic located at Wasonkey Springs Campground. And I, I believe this is the dog show that goes on every year up there, and uh, I don't think we've had any issues at all with this in the past. So is there anybody from the public who wants to speak <laughs> about the dog show? Ruth? No? <laughs> <laughs> no? Yeah, sure. Stop right up. I think we've been doing it for 15 years. Yeah, and it's yeah. run very well and it's very popular. So, uh, what's the pleasure of the council? Move approval. Second. Second. Any comments from the council? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Order 1331 is act to approve the resolve to accept a donation for the fuel assistance program. Uh, turn over to the town manager. Oh. Chester Sullivan passed his red dad. Would nope. you like to do it sure. this evening? Yeah, go ahead. I, I didn't I think he had it. Steal his thunder. Nope, don't do it. Nope, I lost. It. He's a little challenge, Ava. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I didn't. This, well, this I, is a different. What's you have Toadie whisper in your ear. Nope, I had it right here. I was yeah, ready to read it. And I hit all it. right, you go. Nope. Okay, be it resolved. Uh, be hereby resolved by the town council as follows: that the Scarborough, uh, the town of Scarborough, gratefully accepts the pledge in donations from the following businesses and/or persons that have been collected to date to be used for the fuel assistance program, as Jeffrey and Deborah Ertman, and be it further resolved that each business, organization, and/or person be recognized for their generous donations as a token of the town's appreciation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody from the public would like to speak? Seeing none, what's the pleasure of the council? Uh, well, that was a form of a motion. So we have a second. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Any comments? Yeah, I, I, just, uh, I participated in the drive-through, and we uh, were very successful uh, bringing in over ten thousand dollars. And I challenged the rest of my fellow counselors. Uh, I put up a hundred, so uh, challenges. We did. All, we did also. We. So, um, I think you know it's, it was a good success. I think that I appreciate the uh, fire department. I would say thank you very much for the fire department and the pro people from Project Grace for coordinating that effort. It was uh, very, very well done. Very worthy cause. Yes. yes. Uh, to the extent we can identify donors, and there were some um, significant large donors, Scarborough Community Chamber stepped up. I don't know exactly the amount, but to the extent we can identify those, uh, we'll bring those to you to the next meeting to well, give good. some public recognition. Yeah. Yeah, appreciate that. Yes. All those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Thank you very much. Non action items? There is none. Uh, standing committee, special committee reports, Council Roy. Um, well, the finance committee, I've already given you all the information on that. Um, I did, um, last meeting, forgot to say that I did attend the chamber meeting, and the next meeting of the chamber is on the 16th at noontime down at the library. And let me say that I was thoroughly impressed with the amount of projects that the chamber is involved in in this community. 
I, w I was very, very much impressed with, with the activity that goes on in the chamber. Um, and, um, you know, they, they, just, uh, they just keep growing and growing and, and doing more and more things to try to um, help new businesses and to encourage new businesses and, um, you know, keep that chamber going. Um, some exciting things coming up potentially, a proposed chamber move. Um, to a space, um, hope, hopefully in conjunction with the um, Scabu Economic De Development Corporation, and uh, that will um, hopefully give them greater visibility and more membership in the chamber because they're, they're certainly doing great things. Um, the GP COG Steering Committee is coming up May 8th. That's ahead of the game. Um, SEDCO is meeting tomorrow morning at 7.30, and we will be continuing the... Um, interviews with applicants for the job as president of the Scarborough Economic De Development Corporation. Energy Committee is meeting on the 16th. Um, we did receive the tri-generation um, model uh, monies from uh, Efficiency Maine. The base amount is 216000 but that may change based upon um, cost and, and things. Uh, and then uh, we've challenged the uh, members of the committee. We, we've all been uh, challenged with uh, doing a video production, um, a short video of an energy-saving fix that we've done in our own home, which we'll bring, bring you forward to that com next committee meeting. Um, Long-range planning committee met on the 22nd uh, of March. Uh, we. Um, just discussed the wording of the Crossroads District, and uh, we talked about the Jensen property that we voted on tonight, and we'll be meeting again on um, April 12th. Um, I did attend the Metro Co Regional Coalition meeting with the manager um, on Tuesday, and that was kind of interesting. Um, what the major topic of that was a study that was done by um, Mayor Brennan relative to homelessness and um, working together as a re region to try to ameliorate some of the problems that are um, part of the uh, issue of homelessness, uh, the health care needs, and all of those other things. Um, uh, I did attend the PACS meeting. Councillor Alcos was there with me. We had an orientation meeting prior and then the regular PACS meeting. We ratified some bylaws and um, we also um, reviewed the GPCOG PACS agreement and there's still some issues with the indemnification clause, and so that'll be coming back to that committee. I think that's all the committees. Great. <laughs> that's all over. Um, the Conservation Commission will be having a meeting on Tuesday, April. Um, I didn't bring that. I didn't write that on the date, but it's at seven next Tuesday at seven. Um, and they are going. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> they are continuing to work on. Um, a report, um, which was actually a council request, um, just of, on um, town-owned property and their recommendations of what could or could not be done with those properties. Um, they continue to chug away on that. Also, um, April 4th, tomorrow, uh, Thursday evening, Housing Alliance meets at a new time, which is 6.30, the town manager's conference room. Um, they continue to have discussions and work on the Habitat project. Um, and I also have, um, which they don't know this yet, but a last um, <laughs> moment discussion on um, some funds from the fu um, through the budget process. There was some funds for the um, alliance that need to be talked about. Um, and also, um, just as a side note, um, for those that had kind of been interested, um, we are going to start looking at. Um, a historic Preservation Committee. So it will be an ad hoc committee. Um, it will have a one-year sunset, um, and they'll be tasked with, um, or I should say, I, I volunteered myself to be liaison for this. So um, they will be having, um, that should be coming along at your next council meeting um, to have the formation of that committee. Signage. Um, and then they'll be looking, one of the first things is signage for town and having um, identified areas around town with just some signage and some names and some walking history and also of course um, you know some of try to identify some of our more yeah. precious and important properties and what we can and can't do as a town yeah. to help places help like that. people don't know about Plumbers Hill mm -hmm. and uh, Sherwood's Corner yeah. or the Vinegar Road to the Vinegar Road. Road yeah yeah well let's not stop the list we're going to <laughs> <laughs> and that's it Council Sullivan 
Um, ordinance committee. Um, we uh, met um, Tuesday the. Uh, oh boy, where am I? Twenty-six. The uh, twenty-six. <laughs> I, I went by it, um, and we discussed um, uh, signage in in Scarborough. Um, what we could do <coughs> to uh, uh, help businesses out a little bit. Um, not, nothing drastic, no drastic changes, but just to be a little bit more business friendly. Um, we also um, discussed um, accessory units, um, work, working on some uh, new language uh, for accessory units, um, and the uh, size of the lot that they can, that you are able to put one on. Um, that's um, in the planning department and having uh, language drafted towards that uh, for the committee. Um, and uh, we scheduled a meeting to uh, change our meetings to from 5 to 5.30. And the um, next one will be on the 2026. Again, I believe. Is it the fourth uh, of Tuesday? Yes. Twenty third. I'm sorry. Twenty third. The last Tuesday no. of the month. I think we didn't we go to the thirtieth to give him an extra Dan to give an extra week. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. I yeah. think it, that's okay. That's what I was trying to look for. That's what sorry. I thought I did the thirtieth. And um, as far as the uh, transportation committee uh, meeting, um, I was unable to attend because I had to work that night. So I don't have a good report on on what was discussed that night. That it? Yes. Comes to the same clear. Um, really, the biggest thing that I'm working on right now is the school board. So Great. we all kind of know where that stands right now. Yep. Council Blaze. Um, I think we've already covered everything from the <laughs> Finance Committee and the uh, Rules and Policies Committee. So, Council Benedict. Well, a couple of committees. Rules and Policies has on the table is actually through the town manager going out for interpretation of roadside memorials, um, what we need to have in place and what we don't. And anybody have any ideas, feel free to f get a hold of us. On the shelf, then the next meeting of that will be on the 17th at 6.30, half an hour before the council meeting. And the Shellfish Commission has sort of gone a little dormant for time of year because they are very busy in the water. Hopefully winter's over. Hmm. And there has been nothing that I've, I've been told of that's uh, anything pressing. So when it comes up, I will certainly relay it to the council. Thank you. Yeah, and for myself, I, like Council Roy said, I attended the PACS meeting with her, and uh, I had an eco main me uh, meeting I attended, and the ordinance committee meeting. And I wanted to say to uh, we we will form or put together a uh, Council Holbrook a historical society uh, look at those historical buildings in Scarborough that you know that we don't lose that we kind of keep track of and I think that's a good idea your suggestion that we have an ad hoc committee that meets for one year that's usually what ad hoc committees do and at the next council meeting I will I'll put your name forward to be the uh, liaison person to that committee and then maybe we can uh, bring a list of names, people you think are interested, uh, four or five maybe, you can bring them to the council and maybe we can vote on them at the same time. It would be kind of nice. I think some people have approached you mm -hmm. and myself. So, I, again, I think historic buildings is a good one and I think these towns identifying the, the communities or the corners or whatever mm -hmm. um, is a good idea. I noticed Portland does it, South Portland, some other communities do it. So, and it seems to work out pretty well. So. Um, We'll get that moving for you, and I think that that, that will be really beneficial. Council Roy, you got a question? I want to set up another thing. Um, I do. Um, what's that one? A meeting. The what? A meeting. For them? No. For Mr. Meserve. Oh. Well, I was going to do that in, in, our, in my comments. Okay. All right. Thanks.
Yeah, I will. I will. Okay. Um, so I think that's it. Next would be the town manager's report. Okay. Um, I'm pleased, Mr. Reserve State, because I owe him a public response. I've met with him twice privately, and I'm interested to provide feedback from Council now that we've all heard the same information. What I've said privately, uh, I think he's, he's brought to light uh, a number of things that certainly warrant further research to understand the circumstances. Um, and I know something about um, all of them based on our, our prior meetings, and it's certainly uh, something I'm uh, willing to put some time in should Council make that a priority for me. So I. I kind of put that back to you and I look for input um, as a body. Just an update on a couple of things that I'm working on. Um, uh, I made the council aware, but this is something that the public is going to be, uh, I think, needs to be aware of at some point fairly soon. Uh, FEMA is, is on the verge of releasing new revised flood maps, and there are hundreds, uh, potentially a thousand properties affected uh, in one way or another by these revisions. Um, FEMA launched it, first launched this about 18 months ago. They ran into some problems, frankly, um, and withdrew the maps and have re redone them in many respects. Um, pleased with the improvements they've made, not just to Scarborough, but up and down the coast. Uh, but in other respects, there are brand new changes, particularly those properties um, abutting Scarborough Marsh are affected um, quite dramatically. And in spite of our best efforts to um, better understand their methodology and their modeling that uh, gave rise to these new maps. Um, we've been unable to um, really get their attention at this point. So I fear we're going to be faced to uh, challenge these potentially, and this is really a matter the council should consider, um, through a, a formal appeal period that's part of the process. I was trying and still am hopeful we can avoid that kind of formality, but we may well be forced to do that. Um, so there's more to follow. I, 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 you know, we, we do not have the maps to share with people. They did allow them to bring us back um, copies. Uh, but I just feel it's something that's too important and affects too many properties not to start to have some public conversation about this. Uh, secondly, the dredge project. I'm pleased to mention that uh, that's moving forward. There's a meeting scheduled for April 15th that will involve all the stakeholders. Um, in this case, because the project will involve uh, they call it beach nourishment, essentially um, pumping up the dredge spoils, the sand from the bottom, and putting it on the western beach uh, to help fortify the beach area. Perhaps in that country club uh, at the storm event, but uh, within the last four weeks, actually uh, seawater uh, breached over and flooded out two of their fairways. Um, if you go down there today, there's uh, quite significant amount of uh, sandbags that have been placed just to kind of uh, as a temporary fix. Uh, so we're, that's a, a great benefit, frankly. Um, so not only are we going to improve navigation in the channel, but I think we can have some benefits to the abutting properties as well. Uh, as was mentioned, the habitat meeting, or excuse me, housing meeting tomorrow night, I just want to mention publicly that Habitat for Humanity has officially signed the memorandum of, of agreement, mm -hmm. which is a, a huge step and kind of the final step um, in the planning phase, and now we can really start talking details. And so I expect there'll be some very interesting and productive discussions tomorrow night. Um, and as I said earlier, there was a very successful um, fuel, uh, fundraising effort for the fuel assistance led by Project Grace. Um, I want to commend my town staff at the Oak Hill Fire Station, the personnel for opening their doors and, and uh, being hospitable. Um, I think we've shown that that's a, a really good method, not the only, but a good method of fundraising, and we've talked preliminarily about doing this on an annual basis. Um, to be able to bring in over $10,000 in one day is a tremendous thing. Uh, we might time it at the front end of the easy heating season next year as opposed to the back end. But, mm -hmm. um, I want to thank the, the crew at the Oak Hill Station just for being very hospitable. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Councilor Comments. Councilor St. Clair. Um, I just want to say that I have met with Mr. Meserve and I do have his updated paperwork, so I'm happy to share that with everyone else tonight. I think that um, we owe you a response, and I apologize that we haven't given you that yet, but I'll make sure that that happens. Council Blaise? Uh, no comment. Council Benedict? All set, thank you. Council Roy? Um, certainly offer out my condolences to those that I've read about. Uh, there may be others, but um, 
There are three, uh, Bertrand Dumas, uh, Raymond Farrell, and Jack Purley. And, and Jack Purley was a 1948 Scrabble High School grad. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, on, a, on a nice note, um, I, I wanted to send out a big thank you to Bailey's Cramp Campground. Um, as you all know, the fishing season opened uh, on April 1st. And we had a resident at the Veterans Home who has never in his adult life missed opening day fishing. And Bailey's Cramp Campground obliged by opening up the campground so that he could access in and fish. And he caught an eight-pound bass. Oh, wow, that's great. <laughs> and I thought, you know, that was absolutely terrific. I mean, it was just such a nice, nice yeah. thing for them to for them to do. I mean, they they opened the gates and let him go in and, and go fishing. There were two other uh, veterans that uh, that also went fishing. One of the others caught a I think a three or four pound bass, but he caught an eight pound bass and he made his day. Mm -hmm. um, and the and the other thing that happened down at the veterans home this week. Um, uh, it was the other day when I wasn't there. They had a special celebration and honoring of Vietnam vets. Yeah. And there were 17 that were honored. Uh, three of them were employees of Maine Veterans Home, and the other uh, 14 were uh, residents of, vet, uh, of Maine Vets Home. And they had a special awards um, ceremony for them, so that was kind of nice, too. Thank you. Council Holper. Um, just a couple of quick things. Um, the first one is I'd like to uh, give a very Heartfelt thank you to um, the Scarborough PD for offering their building. There was a bit of a confusion um, and some problems. It was a last-minute changes with the wrestling boosters and trying to have a place to a meeting. There was a conflict at the library, and they were gracious enough to open the doors and allow a whole lot of parents to pack that very small room. So, again, thank you to them. Um, I also just wanted to say um, I have two things um, for folks to know about. There's um, the Save the Date, the Community Dialogue with the school. Um, that's April 23rd. Um, that is from 5 to 8 p.m. in the high school cafeteria. Um, basically, all members of the community are welcome to this. This is just to um, have a conversation about education in this community and um, the direction for it to go. I also um, would, wanted to point out, um, I know um, I myself have watched past this a few times. Um, in the hall here at Town Hall, there is this pink flyer on the table. If you'll notice, it's a, um, a, a plea <laughs> for folks. Um, the fire department does really could use your help if you are interested. This flyer is, um, again, right on the table, right as you walk into Town Hall on the top of the glass counter um, with the information about how you may do that. And you can, um, about basically, um, it's a wonderful thing, and it's something that um, it's a great way to give back to your community. Um, fire, police. Yeah, fire and police are both looking for volunteers. So again, uh, if you have any interest, the information is right there right when you walk in. Thank you. Council Sullivan. Um, <clears throat> I did also want to address uh, Mr. Meserv. Um, this discussion has come up um, between us councilors um, in discussion, uh, but no uh, resolution has come. Um, however, I think um, we need to come together and, and develop an answer for you. That's the end of my Thank point. you. Yep. I, too, want to thank Mr. Reserve for coming tonight and bringing it to our attention again. We have talked about it off and on, and it's, uh, it's more than two issues for me. It's, there's, there's a lot of them in town. And I've talked to Councilor Roy and, and, and myself and uh, with Tom, and we're trying to figure out uh, the best way to address that. But I think we, we uh, Councilor Roy and myself, would like to put an ad hoc committee together to try to address all the issues, you know, all those parcels of property out there and see if we can get a handle on it. Um, it isn't a matter of we forgot about you. I think it's a matter of uh, trying to figure out how to do it and thank you for kicking us in the butt there to get us going again on this thing, and we certainly will, and we'll report back to you and certainly the public how we're coming on this thing. So again, I apologize for not acting faster. My fault. I'll take the uh, heat for that, and uh, but we'll make it better, and we'll get on it for you, and we'll let make you know what's going on. Make part of the committee. We yeah. might make you part of the committee. So that. that yep. And, and again, not only the two parcels you talk about, but we need to address the bigger, I keep saying the bigger picture, but we do. Uh, thank you again. 
Um, tomorrow night at the uh, In by the Sea, there's going to be uh, uh, Abby Jacobson from Scarborough is going to be honored for her act of heroism, courage, and kindness. Um, she's going to be honored by the uh, the American Red Cross, and uh, so if anybody would like to go to that, it's going to be tomorrow night at the Inn by the Sea at 7 o'clock, I believe. So I know it's short notice, but I just wanted to recognize her, and maybe at the next meeting we can tell, you know, we'll find out uh, what she did specifically, and we'll um, relay it to everybody. Um, go ahead. Yes, I believe she found a, a very large sum of money. I don't yeah. recall exactly and returned it to the, mm -hmm. uh, the owner. So it was really an act wow. of uh, uh -huh. free citizenship. Yeah, good for her. Uh, also, I received a letter from the the clerk of the main, uh, the secretary of the main senate, and the clerk of the main house said that they received our resolution 13-01. Er, the resolution was to urging the uh, main state legislature to craft a biennial budget, which prevents a significant increase in property taxes. You remember we signed that yep. a couple of meetings ago, and we sent it up to the legislature. The, their letter of acknowledgement, and I believe it says here that they're going to go. Um, to the Appropriations Committee, and uh, there's a number of other towns and communities have uh, passed the same resolution, um, literally over 100 of them now. So I think that's good. They're paying attention, and at least uh, I thank them for their acknowledgement. Um, I, I thank the council in, for, I believe, correcting the uh, circuit breaker program and, and uh, fixing the error. Um, I, again, apologize to those people who were shorted last year, and I guess uh, when we put this together again, we didn't realize that there, there was a little fluke in it, and uh, we corrected it tonight, and I think that's all good. So, uh, Is there any other questions, any concerns, comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Good night. Thank you. Mm -hmm.